Hi everyone, welcome to my first tutorial where I show you how to animate the official Miraculous models in Maya 2015. Let's start with the basics. To move the camera, hold Alt and right click to zoom in or out. Next, hold Alt and left click to rotate the camera however you like. To move the camera around, hold Alt and use the scroll wheel on your mouse. Alright, let's begin with the face control from Face Machine It's what you'll use to animate facial expressions. As you can see, there are a lot of controllers for the mouth, the eyes, the cheeks, and pretty much every facial expression. Made a move you don't like, no worries just hit CT or L plus C to undo it. Now let's move on to the hair setup. Click on the H above the head to start configuring it. You'll find all the hair settings in the control editor. Over on the right side of the screen, in the hair mode option, you'll see several categories like PFX, Mesh, and Off. I'd suggest using the PFX format for your simulations and final renders. Set the display quality towards 3. The view might not be super pretty while you animate, but everything will be much smoother. If you want, you can go for 15 it looks better and is still smoother than going all the way up to 50. To focus on a rigor object, press F to make the camera jump right in front of it. Alright, now let's get into the controllers, we'll start with the hand. Before you start, I recommend clicking on the little plus sign next to the hand to change its attribute. For the KFK category, I'd suggest keeping it at zero since one is way more complicated and tricky to handle. Now, let's try animating our character. Use the controller you want to work with, like the hand. Over on the left, there are three categories, movement, rotation, and scale but we won't be using them. First, under movement, you can move the arm however you want. For the second one, we'll control the rotation of the hand or other parts. The third one controls the scale, but it's mainly for objects or other things, we don't need it to control our character. Alright, now let's get into the system for the fingers and stuff. Select this shape that's above the hand. Sometimes, finger controls are turned off on certain models, just set it to on so you can freely control the fingers. On the side, you have several categories for the fingers. The curls let you close the fingers. With some models, the closed fist can vary. Try adjusting the numbers in different categories or moving the fingers to add more realism. To add the ring for the yo-yo on the finger, just activate ring this. You can adjust the finger settings by tweaking the numbers in the categories to customize them however you want. When you select a controller in the channel box, highlight all the scale and rotation values, and enter the value you want, they'll all change to that number. You can also use the controllers for the legs and other parts. Press S to add a keyframe to the timeline and save the rig's position. You can choose the yellow square controller in the middle to control the entire character by moving other controllers. You can control the eyes with the front controller. Select one of the two circles to move only one eye. 
The rectangle in the middle of the face is used to open and close the mouth without limits. Oops. The controllers on the left side of the face are used to control the teeth and tongue. You can also select a hair rig to move the hair yourself. You can move the head using either the circle around the neck or the rig behind the head. I suggest using the rig behind the head. There are also several other controllers to create the animations you want. Behind the elbows, there's a small square that helps reposition the arm correctly without moving the hand. There's also a rig above the shoulder to lift or lower it. You can select the large yellow circle to move the entire character without affecting the other animations. Now let's turn on the textures to make the model look nicer. Click the green plus on the ground in front of or under the character, depending on the model. In the channel editor, model type is set to animation by default. Change it to rendering to activate all the textures. The model will appear gray, that's normal. We're going to activate V-Ray Rendering next. Wow, our ladybug looks amazing, but the hair and other textures are too shiny. Let's go back to Legacy Mode from the Rendering section to make it look more realistic. First, make sure you're in the Surface tab, then click on Create, go to Light, and select V-Ray Dome Light. Let's go back to the rendering section and launch V-Ray IPR. Wow, the image looks so much better and more realistic now. Now let's go back to legacy mode and learn how to turn on the hair simulation. In the simulation section or in some models under automation, Click on or set the value to 1. Make sure the timeline range matches the area where you press play. Sometimes the animation won't play in the scene, and I'm not sure why. You can add more lights by going to Create Gives Light Gives Spotlight to bring more light and color to your scene. Click on the yellow sphere to display the lights present in the scene. Place your lights wherever you like. You can change the color, brightness, and size of your light in the Attribute Editor. Now, let's check out our render. Beautiful. You can see the pink reflections we added. If you want, you can add textures without details in legacy mode by selecting these two icons or by pressing 6. Now, Let's get into setting up the UU. I still don't completely get it myself. Select the yellow circle around the UU to move it and see its settings. Open the channel editor to change its settings. Click on Extrude 1. The extrude type is used to modify the wire surrounding Ladybug's waist. By choosing distance, the wire goes away, and you can move the yo-yo however you like. You can move parts of the wire as you like by selecting their rig.
I've probably forgotten a lot about the model since I haven't discovered everything yet. If you want more tutorials, just let me know and tell me how I can improve.